The first thing that any student needs to know before they start to play the bassoon is, of course, how to put it together. Because the bassoon is a large instrument that has a fairly complicated keywork system, it's important that a student follow a really systematic set of steps when they assemble it. You want to start with the boot joint, which is the bottommost joint of the instrument. It has two holes in the end. You want to take the wing joint, which is the shorter of the top two joints, and it has this curved part right here. You put the wing joint in the smaller of the two holes in the boot joint. And the alignment of this joint is really important for the working of the instrument. You want to twist it so that the curve of the wing joint lines up with the curve of this hole, which the next joint is going to go into. And the reason this is important is because there's a linkage right here that connects this key, which we call the pancake key, to the whisper key. And if this is not at quite the right angle, the key won't close all the way, and it'll cause a lot of problems when the student goes to play. So you want to make sure that this is aligned. Another way that you can tell that it's lined up on some bassoons, particularly new ones, is that there'll be a little scratch mark right here, a scratch mark on the metal ring and a scratch mark on the wood. And if you line up those two scratch marks, that's where it will be properly aligned. A repair technician will all often put that mark in to let you know where it should be. After you get the wing joint in, you want to get the next joint, which is the base joint or the long joint, so-called because it's the longer of the two top joints and also because it's where the tone holes are for most of the lowest notes of the instrument. The bass joint goes right next to the wing joint and you want to put it in so that the side with all these keys is on the same side as all the keys on the wing joint and just push it right in. The alignment of this joint is also important. You can see on my instrument there's a metal plate right here that it's kind of a stopper that tells me how far to twist it over. Most new bassoons also will have those but some older ones won't. If you don't have that you can look at these keys here and just make sure that these keys aren't going to touch the wing when you press them down. You can also think about leaving maybe a one to two millimeter gap between the keys here on the long joint and the keys here on the wing joint. Now you might notice that having just put my long joint in the bassoon, there's a good size gap right here between the bass joint or the long joint and the boot. That's because this is often kind of a tight joint that takes a little bit of effort to put in. And oftentimes students are really nervous about using too much pressure to get this joint down in there. But they don't need to be. If you just put it on the ground and even stand up if you need to and just put your weight on it, it should go in just fine. The last joint, the topmost one, is the bell. It only has one key and this key needs to line up with this. And just for good measure, you might want to give it a good push to make sure that the bass joint's all the way in. Now, lastly, you'll take the hand rest or crutch if the instrument that you're working with has one and put it in. If you have the option of using a crutch, it's good to use one because it gives them some place to put their hand. Now, we have one piece left, which is the bocal. The bocal is probably the most expensive part of the bassoon in terms of square footage. Um, even a student model bocal will cost you $250 or $300, maybe more. Um, and a professional one is anywhere from $700 to $1,000. And it's quite fragile compared to, comparatively. So you want to make sure that students learn how to handle it. They should always handle it from the cork end, where it's the strongest, it's the thickest, and also the largest. Here at the tip, it's quite thin. So they should never carry the bocal like this or try to put it in this way. It's a very bad idea. Put it in holding here and just a light twist. 
good place to use cork grease if you have some. And push it in all the way. You'll want to make sure that this vent right here on the vocal lines up with the whisper key. So have your students practice this sequence of steps a few times before they even you know, start to play the bassoon and they'll be in, in much better shape when they get home and try to practice. <laughs>